We're going to take a look at strings from the perspective of object-oriented programming. Recall that in object-oriented programming, objects, that is, instances of classes, are very important. Objects have two important characteristics. They have a value, sometimes we refer to that as the state of the object, and they also have methods that they can perform. And so pictorially, we often draw this as a circle where the inner part of the circle represents the value or the state and around that circle we supply methods. Those methods are those things that the object can perform. And so if I have a reference to a particular data object I can ask that data object to perform methods and those methods will be performed in relation to the state value of that particular object. So in the case of strings, what we're talking about is a string whose state represents the sequence of characters and whose methods then are defined to be things that might be useful for strings to be able to carry out. So if I use the example that we've used before where we define a variable called my name and let it be a reference to the string DAVID, then what we've done, as we've seen in the past, is create a variable which is a reference to a data object whose state is the string DAVID. The methods, then, that that string is allowed to perform, basically the methods that all strings in Python are allowed to perform, give me the ability to ask the string to carry out certain functions. And so for example, one thing that we could do is we could ask the myName object, that is the object referenced by the variable myName, to perform a method called upper. And when we do that, it needs no parameters to do its work. When we hit return, notice that what we get is a string with all uppercase letters. Now let's go back and look at this very closely. When we ask an object to perform a method, we use the dot notation. So the way we read this is, I would like the object referred to by the variable my name to perform its upper method, and then we provide whatever information that method needs to do its work. Methods are basically like functions, they have parameters, the difference is that whereas a function doesn't belong to any particular object, a method does. And so when I ask the string my name to perform its upper method, it responds by giving me back a string that consists of all, care, all capital letters, in this case representing the letters that were in the original string. It is important to realize, however, that the original string itself has not been changed. So the method returned a string of capital letters but it did not change the original string object. There is also a method called lower, and you can imagine that what that does is converts all of the characters to be lowercase. Another thing that we can do is ask an object to perform a count. And when we do that, we're asking to find out how many times a particular character or substring appears within a string. And so I could ask how many times does the character A appear in that string? And the result is one, because there is one little a. Now you might want to be thinking, well, there are two d's. So if I ask for a count of the number of d's, I should get two. But remember that case sensitivity says that the big D is different than the little d. So again, there's only one capital D. And in fact, in this case, there are no letters that have more than one occurrence. Now, if I ask to count the number of occurrences of something that is not in the string, it tells me that there are zero occurrences of the X. If I wanted to look at an example that might have a much larger count, I could say, take the string, and notice in this case I'm just directly using a string constant, and ask it to count the number of, let's say, s's that appear in that string.
and there are four. Another thing that we can do, another method that strings allow, is the method that will replace one substring with another. And so, for example, if I ask the myName object to perform the replace method, I can say I would like to replace all occurrences of the A with an X. And what that will do is it will return a string where X is in place of the A. Again, however, it's important to notice that the original string has not been changed. The result of the replace method is to return a new string that has an X replacing the A that was there. And had there been more than one occurrence, we would have made replacements for all of those occurrences. So, for example, if we said let's take the string Mississippi and ask the replace function to replace all instances of I with say XXX, then we end up with a rather odd looking string, but nonetheless every I has been replaced by three X's. Whenever we have a string, it's oftentimes interesting to ask the question where are certain characters in that string? The count method asks the question, how many times does a character occur? But there are two methods that allow us to locate a particular character, or at least the first occurrence of the character. One of those methods is called find. And so if we say my name dot find and then we go looking for, say, the V character, it will respond back 2. Why? Because 2 is the position of the V. Recall that inside of the string, there are positions starting at 0 and working over to 4, and so the V happens to be at position 2. And so what the find method does is it returns the position of the first occurrence of the character V. Now, if I ask my name to perform its index method and give it the same parameter, then I also get two. So find and index do the same thing. They return the position of the first occurrence of the character that I supply as the argument. What makes these two different is the way that they behave if we supply something that's not in the string. So if I ask to find the first occurrence of an x, the find method returns a negative 1 if the character is not present. On the other hand, if I ask the index method to do the same task, then I get an error that that particular substring wasn't found in the string. And so the find method always returns an integer, either a valid position or a negative one, but the index method works in that it finds and returns an integer in the, in the uh, successful case, but when unsuccessful, it returns a runtime error.